X homeless redditors. What was the scariest thing that you ever saw on the streets? NSFW. Kids beating the shti out of a homeless man. Started with them spitting on him. He gets up and runs after them. Then a couple of them hit him from behind with some IKEA looking wood. You know the one that snaps easy? He gets mad and they run off. He comes back to the bench and falls asleep again. 10 minutes later they're back and they just start beating the F king shti out of him. I had to jump in and stop them. A woman giving birth at a bus terminal. The scariest thing I saw was a man named Tony T. Apparently he had been a coke head for years but had to keep a job to support his habit. He had received a huge settlement. Over $500k. At which point he decided that he never had to work again. He lived on the streets and smoked cocaine all day. The best way to describe him is Tuco from Breaking Bad. He was generous with his drugs so people would naturally want to be around him. But he was unpredictable and dangerous. I have tons of stories about him being crazy aggressive but the last time I saw him he beat a man with a pipe for dropping a tiny crack rock in the dirt. We are talking like 20 bucks worth of dope and he probably either killed the guy or f ked him up for life. I tried to stop him and he threatened to turn on me. I walked out. Went to her phone and called my sister to come get me. She helped me get my shti together and I never went back. That was 30 years ago. Cold weather. I thought I was going to die one night I was so cold. I remember waking up thinking you need to move or you are going to die. This was the scariest thing for me. I ended up sleeping in buses. Burning sterno. It's like jellied rubbing alcohol that burns for a good while. I would try to constantly be walking cause if I stopped I'd probably fall asleep and die. I also sometimes rested under a bridge from time to time. One time I fell asleep under the bridge and I woke up finally feeling warm and cozy and thought it was nice to finally be able to rest. Then I realized that it's way too cold for this and I can't move without that frozen fingers pain everywhere. Struggled real hard to get my sterno out and could barely bend my fingers enough to light it. Like my hands were nearly useless. I'm really glad I woke up. Edit. Thanks for the gold. Edit I I. All you guys telling me you're glad I woke up got me feeling all warm and fuzzy inside. I haven't felt this happy to be alive for a long time. Thank you. Lots of stabbings and rapes. I was stalked by a gang one night on my way home from work. I still have no idea how I wasn't arped or mugged. Once I woke up suddenly to a not homeless man holding a huge knife staring at me inside the abandoned building's basement I was sleeping in. Once he noticed I was awake he asked if I was Russian. I said no and he said he was looking for a different girl. Gave me $20 and left. Edit. If you can read this and immediately think yes. Not what I saw. What I heard. If that counts. For a while I slept in an empty warehouse. I'm in the UK. So it was a huge Victorian building with about 6 floors. I slept on the 3rd or 4th floor. Out of the way of casual intruders, drunks and prostitutes use that space, and one night I heard a load of shouting and a female screaming from the ground floor. Now I was 16. Junkie and about 120 pounds. So I wasn't in any position to do much. But I crept down the steps to see what was happening. By the time I got there, the place was empty and the noise had stopped so I went back upstairs. I found out the next day they found a body in the wasteland outside. Turns out the woman was a prostitute. They assumed her client stabbed her after a struggle and she'd made a run for it before he caught her and finished the job. Always wonder if I'd been able to help. But I'd have probably got stabbed too. Colon. My brother was homeless. He was hit by a car and died on the sidewalk. I was there 5 minutes before and 5 minutes after it happened. Had to identify his body for the cops and ambulance. Was homeless for a summer and an acquaintance through the party scene of the town invited me to crash on her couch. Woke up in the middle of the night to her screaming into her phone about how they are out to get her and are setting the world up for destruction. Pretended like I was still asleep and got out of there the next day real quick. I saw a really angry bald man aggressively masturbating his flaxy dick. 
tbh that was probably the most scary thing. I wonder if he was angry because it was flaxid. People who had been homeless way longer than me. Trust me. There is nothing scarier on the streets than the meth couple who this has been their day in and day out for one thousands of days. People joke about meth. But unless you've been around chronic users. You don't understand how truly scary it makes people become. Like a whole new level of animalistic. Impulsive. Not right in the head people. I fking hate meth. Snow. I'm a big. Scary dude so I never had trouble with people picking on me or whatever. In that sense the streets were safe to me. But seeing snow for the first time that year just made me cry and panic. It was too early for snow. I wasn't ready for that type of cold and was hoping to be on my feet again before the winter came. Beautiful thing like snow just f kept me up in so many ways. I was just sleeping around where other guys in my city sleep. Then just see some teens stabbing one of the homeless guys multiple times. Ran away from there. Never turned back. Biggest thing. 5 feet 3 115 lb. Was how often people try to abduct you. That and how often people try to serve you tampered food. Everyone is gonna try to steal from your ass so watch your shti. Keep your mouth shut and find a good place that is desolated from nocturnal animals and assholes. There is a drainage ditch in my area that the local homeless people tend to bed down in. A few years ago. When I found myself destitute. I spent one night down there. That night I witnessed a molotov get thrown into another dude's spot which led to a huge fire that ran rampant through the area. Yeah. I bought a tent the next day and started camping in the local mountains. In my years being a homeless junkie and then cleaning up kinda and working at a homeless shelter on the street. I saw a dude try to murder his girlfriend with a machete. Like full on swing and barely miss and my heart was fking pounding like I was sure I was about to witness a murder. I also saw countless ODs and shti. Saw a girl beating to shti who had just been up head asking for help. Saw a dude get stabbed. Saw a big huge dude have a heart attack and die and the paramedics frantically trying to give him chest compressions and shti and he was just flopping around. Saw a lot of shti honestly but those were the ones that come to mind as scaring the shti out of me the most. So I lived in my car but I remember seeing this woman and talking to her outside a store when I was just chilling eating some food and she told me she had been homeless literally her entire life and had never sleep on a proper bed in her life. I asked how old she was. She told me she was 53. It was scary to me because I realized that that could have easily been me. I think about that woman every single day. I was staying in a homeless shelter. That had a men's side and a woman's side. Most of the men were convicted sx offenders. In the 8 months I spent in that hell on earth. I was friends with 3 women who were uphead by some of these men. The truly scary thing? The women were actively discouraged from telling anyone what had happened, especially the police. If they filed a report with the police, they were permanently barred from the shelter. That place, one of the most celebrated in my state, regularly has the mayor and governor drop by, is the most evil place on earth. Eater. The Pine Street in Boston. M.A. It just didn't occur to me to say where. Cause I never expected many people to see this. Also Eater. The rapes didn't take place inside the shelters. The men stayed in one building. The women in another. The rapes took place outside. After dark. In areas that didn't have have good CCTV coverage. And tie for my first awards. I've never been homeless but I work in a homelessness service. One of my colleagues had been homeless and was telling me about it. He said he had a sleeping bag and a small tent in the woods that he used to sleep in. I said I would be too shti scared to do that. He then tells me when sleeping in a city center he was pissed on multiple times and was set fire to once and he would rather take the very slim chance of bumping into a killer looking for people in a forest at night. This isn't remotely scary. It's more just f ked up. After we lost our home. We stayed in a motel for a while but due to occupancy rules I slept in the car in the parking lot. 
One night a woman parks next to me in the lot. And the security guard shows up. And they literally spent the next 3 hours getting high. Talking. And then fking in the car. The entire time I'm in the next parking space trying to ignore them and look at my phone. I don't know if it counts but I lived in a van for a month or so when I was in college. And would sleep at the park. I didn't necessarily see it but I heard it and it is burned into my mind forever. A group of the local hobos beat a guy near to death and they all up had his girlfriend wife then beat her to death. I found a new park after that. LPT. If a random drug dealer asks you for a ride home don't say yes. If you do say yes have extra keys with you. Almost got our head after driving a random drug dealer I bought drugs from home. Dude stole my keys out of the ignition and said he needed his dick wet if I wanted my keys back. Pretended to start crying to make things awkward. He got out of the car with my keys. Locked doors. Got my spare keys out and floored it out of there. Spent a good few months homeless after being robbed of all of my money. If there are homeless women about. The scummiest dudes band together to create a rape gang and hunt the women all night. Some got away. Some did not. The police never cared. All sorts of the usual shti. Dicey situations with dicey people. But the one where I was spine chilling terrified. I had found a seemingly nice quiet cut in the woods. Shade. Private. I'm set. I wake up to a most guttural yowl at 2 a. M. A pack of feral cats that the adjacent 50 year old rain man had lured to his property with cans of wet food. They stood on the fence yowling. Eyes reflecting as we stared the other down. I was homeless in Hawaii for a month after I got out of the army. Nothing I saw was ever like Hoshti Imadai. But there are a lot of homeless meth heads wandering the streets. I watched people having arguments with a spoon they were holding. People eating sand at the beach. People wearing weak old tea caked pants. Meth is fking wild. Stick to weed and shrooms. Not scary but disturbing. I, F, was walking trying to get to downtown for reason at night. Possibly shelter when this guy started to walk beside me. He followed me for 3 miles while playing with his dick beside me. Even when I made it downtown he still followed me and thought he was going to corner me and probably try and uh, pay me. But he didn't notice I was walking us to a nearby building that had security until I yelled for help. He ran off immediately afterwards. I think everyone on this thread would appreciate invisible people on YouTube. He interviews homeless people and you'd be shocked how homelessness really happens to regular people. I remember seeing three guys just basically playing with this poor girl a few years younger than me, 18 at the time, trying to see what she'd do for drugs. She was homeless too and very uninterested in them or the drugs. It wasn't scary like spooky or something. It was just that humans will resort to this insane base level of craziness. I did step in and they backed off but that was one time I was able to step in as opposed to the many I wasn't. Dude jerking off in the night bus. Bed bugs from a shelter I stayed in for a few nights. I ended up hospitalized. I was once homeless for 4-5 days a few years back when I got lost in another city in Turkey where my family lost me. I had to go to homeless shelter since I didn't have my bag, had my phone, money, card, keys, ID important stuff, and it was when the Turkish coup happened. I saw people being beaten and sometimes to death. Gunfire. Bombs. Gas. I didn't have anyone to help since the police were busy. Everyone was busy. The scariest moment was when a military officer threw a few Molotov cocktails at the crowd. My cousins found me near the mosque they visited at midnight. I was sleeping behind a closed shop on a bench. I am fine and doing well thank god. A friend of mine who was battling with addiction and living on the streets in Dallas. TX told me he bought drugs in an abandoned home once and the guys there were holding a 14 year old girl hostage. Tied to a bed and were selling her to people. I hope they got what they deserved. I watched a pregnant woman smoking crack at an abandoned house I had to rescue some family from once upon a nightmare. 
but quite frankly after reading these comments. I wasn't really homeless. Booty had to live in my car on and off for a couple months. The mountain town due to scarcity of work available at the time. Woke up in the middle of the night to a black bear that was curious trying to get in. Comma I wasn't really homeless. Booty had to live in my car on and off for a couple months. But isn't that what being homeless is? It's a long story but not that interesting but long story short I grew up in a very sheltered home. Through a series of unfortunate events, haha, I became homeless. For someone who didn't know anything about the world. Seeing people use drugs openly. Eat garbage. Cry themselves to sleep on a park bench. Kill themselves. When I'd get ready to sleep I'd roll my windows up on some sheets to block out everything except part of the driver's side window so I could see out just a bit and have a view of my side mirror. I had a dog. And while he was small. He was also mighty. And a very good boy. I'd sleep on my side in the backseat and he'd sleep in the nook of my arm. One night he started growling and it woke me up. As soon as I opened my eyes I was looking directly into the eyes of someone else standing outside my car while they peered through the crack in the sheets. I asked what do you want? And he bolted. While homeless, before I joined the military, I was sleeping in either an abandoned factory or in my car at the time. While sleeping in the factory I witnessed someone cracked out of their mind arguing with someone else cracked out of their mind arguing over who was going to take the last of the heroin that they had I watched as someone slit their wrists with a needle covering themselves and their own blood saying that they were the sacrificial lamb and deserved to get the last hit. Group of kids hitting sleeping homeless people with rocks tied to sticks. Seattle 5 years or so ago. They killed a few. I didn't sleep for days. And I still hear the sound. Neighbors caught a homeless dude shooting seagulls out of the sky and hanging them on a clothesline. Called Gaming Warden. Shows up to arrest dude when confirmed. Dude says only means of feeding his family. Warden realizes true and not just doing for sport. Let's him off with warning with promise to never do again as seagulls are a protected animal in these parts. When leaving he asks with curiosity what a seagull tastes like. Dude says tastes like mix between spotted owl and California condor. In my car at a gym parking lot. Heard a scream so blood curdling at 2am that I was equally scared and worried for the person. It went on for a minute and I looked out and saw a car driving slowly by the business front that it seemed to be coming from. I called the cops because if someone was in that much pain. It must be a mixture of overdosing on meth crack or stimulants and being hurt. Or just a prank by kids. Not on the streets but behind some garages in the apartment complexes where I had a place. What felt scary to me was the realization that I didn't have a place to go. Usually after a long day you can kick back and relax at home. The dread of knowing I still had to find a safe place to sleep where I wouldn't be found was such a daunting task at the time. I was homeless in a major MI city. It isn't necessarily the violence that scared me. But how quickly everyone became desensitized to it and how little the general public cared. I slept by the river and every couple of days the dredge line patrol boats would go by and pull out body parts so they didn't get caught in the fish ladder. I'd find myself talking to other homeless people saying yep they pulled three out this morning. And a few extra arms. Inevitability they said so and so was missing. One of them was probably him. All of it was just as casual as you can be. Like I was giving a weather report. The scariest thing is how predatory normal seeming men are. So many men offering a ride. A shower. A place to sleep for a night. Dinner. But always SX is the end goal expectation. Some were blatant but some surprised me.